In this week's New England video fishing forecast, we've got updates on striped bass from Cape Cod to Connecticut, some big blackfish being landed, Massachusetts waters all the way down into Long Island Sound. It's a pretty good mixed bag bottom fishing off Block Island, and an update on the Coastal Kayak Clash as we enter the home stretch of the season long fishing tournament. Check it out. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. I'm out here doing a little trout fishing today. Uh, here in Connecticut, they've been doing stocking for the last, uh, geez, six, eight weeks. Uh, they just concluded it pretty much across the state last week, I believe it was, with the Atlantic salmon stocking that was took place. Um, I'm hopefully just going for some regular old trout today, but we shall see what happens. So uh, let's jump right into the reports. We're going to start from Massachusetts. I heard from James Jukes this week. Uh, he said that he was fishing Plum Island area over the weekend as he had heard, he got word that there was good numbers of schoolies around in the surf still. And he just had to find out for himself. So he heard there were small fish, so he armed himself with an ultralight, ultralight rod, a 3 8 ounce cast master, and headed out. And it did not take long for him to get into an absolute pile of you know, 10 to 20 inch class striped bass. Uh, no giants, but tons of fun. I love going after those little guys in uh, this time of the year. Of course, single hook off or trebles, a single treble, bend down those barbs, you are good to go and get in on them. All right, next up, we hear from Tim Smith, Fisherman Magazine's multimedia producer. He's up on the Cape Cod right now, and he snuck in a little fishing while he was on his vacation. Let's see what he's got to report. Hey, thanks, Toby. If you're looking for some great light tackle action on the Cape, uh, the Brewster Flats have a lot of little schoolies running around. All you need is some uh, a light rod, even like a freshwater rod, and I've been throwing epoxy jigs. And the fish, they come in, particularly on the uh, the high tide where they're around the jetties and the groins and the rocks. And, uh, and I've been doing really well. Just look for the birds, and the birds are going to tell you where the fish are. So from Brewster Flats, Toby, back to you. Thanks a lot, Tim. Those Brewster Flats where you're fishing up there uh, this week are producing a lot of fish this year. Um, obviously the usual schoolies that they have in that area, but also plenty of slot fish as well as more than enough overs to keep you guessing. Uh, and if you haven't fished there, it's a pretty cool spot, especially for us here in New England as far as um, shallow flats fishing. Uh, it, it's like if you took the Bahamas, uh, or what I've heard about the Bahamas, and placed it up here in New England, that's kind of what you got in the Brewster Flats. So if you're ever up in the area, Looking to try something different. Uh, great light tackle, fly fishing area, but again, don't uh, uh, sit back too much because there are some big bass that come through there from time to time. All right, moving on down into Buzzards Bay. Uh, tog fishing may, remains lights out. Uh, Captain Jason Colby, little sister Charters, who fishes out of the Westport River, has been absolutely killing it this fall in the ro local rock piles. Um, last I had heard, Jason was just about, if not completely booked up through the end of the season. He sails through right around Thanksgiving. Um, but if you want to check with him, see if he's got a spot open or maybe he's got a waiting list of sorts to get you on it in case someone has to cancel. It's worth hitting him up. Email is fishinglsister at aol.com. Uh, you can also, he's already taken bookings for spring flounder fishing up in Quincy, which is, uh, if you've never flounder fished or if you used to flounder fish back in the heyday, this is our last sort of uh, hot spot here in New England. Some great fishing. So get in touch with Jason, see what you can do. All right, moving along. Next up, TJ Kopecki's got an update on tog fishing in the East Bay, as well as striper fishing in some of his local rivers. Hey, thanks, Toby. Hey, guys, nice to be back again. Uh, lots to cover. Maho Bay, Narragansett Bay, East Bay. Um, had a couple outings this week. Uh, we're first going to talk about the tog fishing. Uh, did very well to tog fishing underneath the Maho Bridge. Uh, I found a new spot. Um, Nice little rock pile just off of one of the, the posts on the bridge, um, set up on top of it, and pretty much it was lights out all day uh, for about six hours. Um, had to weed out a lot of fish, uh, predominantly smaller fish, but I'll tell you, we got into some nice 20, 21 inch fish, uh, enough table fare for, you know, a couple outings, I froze some fish. Um, you know, the, the neighbors get some fish too. Uh, but uh, it was a great, great day out there at the tog fishing. The weather was spectacular. Uh, we were fishing in shorts and t-shirts, and who would have thought on uh, November 6th and 7th you'd be out there fishing in, in short sleeves and shorts. But uh, I, I tell you, it was a good day, and it was a beautiful weekend if you uh, were fishing out there. Um, I also did some fishing um, in the Warren River. 
I did some fishing in the Coles River, um, both for a striped bass, still looking for some bass. Um, I did connect in the Coles. I did connect on the, the Warren River um, at night. Um, didn't see any bait swimming around, but uh, still connected on some fish. Um, and that was uh, right around the November 10th and 11th. Um, still happy to see fish there. Uh, last year, I was not catching anything at this time uh, on those bridges. So uh, I'm happy to still be catching some small stripers there. Uh, I got to say, when I was in the bay on my way out to, to go to the Tatar grounds, I saw lots and lots of bait fish, like schooled up, swimming around, birds, cormorants, all on them. Uh, we did stop and take probably 50, 60 casts on each school and uh, did not connect with any fish. So uh, it's just a lack of fish that are not inside of the bay that could be outside of the bay that's on the bay or not. But uh, hey, you didn't connect uh, with anything on those schools of uh, pogies, I would presume that they are. Um, so, um, I mean, I gotta say though, to have that much bait inside the bay at this time of the year is pretty much amazing. And, uh, I'm kind of happy to have it because, uh, it's just a sign of like good things to come still. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get another good week or two, um, of striper fishing around here in Maho Bay. Temperatures in the water was still 57 degrees, uh, which is a, a good temperature, um, and with the warm weather that we're still having, um, I just think that, uh, we're going to have some good fishing for the next week or two. So, uh, hey, stay tuned to the Fisherman Magazine and, uh, we'll keep you updated. Catch you later. Tight lines. Thanks a lot, TJ. Looks like you're uh, still getting some pretty good fish up there. Um, out on the bottom grounds off of Block Island, heard from the guys over at the Francis Fleet. They report some really good mixed bag action on a variety of fish, including market-sized cod, some mega black sea bass exceeding the six pound mark, and some massive dinner plate sized porgies. Um, and as far as the cod goes, it's in that window right now, I guess, where it's primarily a jig bite, but of course clams are producing. It happens a lot of this time of year because you've got sea herring around, you've got the mackerel, so jig is always a fun way to do it. So if you do plan to head out with them, be sure that you bring um, both uh, you know, jigs as well as bait rigs. I also said anglers who have been downsizing on the hooks a bit are the ones that are loading up on those porgies, basically as many as you could possibly want. Over on their blackfish trips, which are also running right now, they've been seeing up and down success where one day produces just lights out action. It's just drop and set, drop and set. Uh, whereas the next day, the fish are a bit finicky and picky. It's kind of what we're seeing everywhere, um, but their pool fish in just about every trip is right in that nine to just about 10 pound mark. So some quality fish right there. So uh, hit up the guys on the France this fleet as well as the seven bees both sailing out of point judith right now for mixed bottom fish and blackfish all right moving on down into long island sound there's still a ton of bait around in the form of adult bunker peanut bunker silver sides and even those young of the year river herring that are dumping out of the rivers and uh Unfortunately, there hasn't been a whole lot feeding on it, aside from maybe small schoolies and hickory shad, both of which I got into last week, uh, throwing my four weight fly rod, which is actually the same setup I'm using here on the river for trout. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I took a little extended lunch break, poked around, was just more scouting to see what might be available for bait. And of course I had to bring the rod along, got into a bunch of both species. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then on Saturday, I went out of the Connecticut River and the target was blackfish, but as we were making our way out, we saw absolutely acres and acres and acres of happy bait just doing its thing, basically not being harassed by much. Well, aside from one gigantic seal that we encountered on the way back in in the afternoon, but uh, in the morning when we were on our way out, Again, it was a blackfish trip. Um, it turned out to be kind of a tough bite. That's what I heard from pretty much everyone that I spoke to in the region uh, on, on Saturday. But nonetheless, right off the bat, um, my son got his first dogfish. Aiden got his first dogfish, which I got to say, as much as the rest of us uh, uh, hate the dogfish coming through, for someone who's been absolutely obsessed with sharks since birth, uh, it was pretty cool. He was psyched, could not believe that he actually caught himself a shark. So congrats, dude. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, from there, Aiden, Chris, and I had some small blackfish we picked away at. I got a couple more dogfish of my own, but it was Kyle Garvin who boated the lone keeper of the day with a solid 16 inch fish. Now, it was kind of fitting that Kyle got the big fish of the day on the boat as we were out there in celebration of his seventh birthday, which we celebrated the party on Sunday. His birthday uh, actually took place on Tuesday. So happy birthday to you, Kyle. I'm sure we'll get out at least one more time. You can uh, twist your dad's arm, see if we can get out on the water again. 
and keeping with the kids and the blackfish. I got a really cool email over the weekend from Rebecca <coughs> De La Bruyere. Uh, she fished on Friday. She was fishing out of Groton with her husband Brent, six-year-old son Kipton, and their good friend Mike. But as it always seems to be, Kipton was the one who put on the clinic that day. He landed a bunch of fish. Now this was his first ever blackfish trip, so the kid was right on it. Um, got a bunch of shorts, got a handful of keepers, so really did a great job. Um, you know, I've been hearing that area outside of Groton, outside the Thames a bit on those big rock piles out there, have been producing pretty well. Um, no giants, but plenty of fish from, you know, just keeper to six, maybe seven pounds or so. And while that rounds out the reports for now, of course, if I didn't get to anything that you wanted, you can head on over to thefisherman.com right now. I'm gonna close things out with a bit of an update on the Coastal Kayak Clash for you. We have just about 18 days remaining in the Fisherman Magazine's inaugural Coastal Kayak Clash Fishing Tournament. Now, this tournament began way back on May 1st, and it concludes at midnight on November 30th. Now, there hasn't been a whole lot of movement on the leaderboard over the last couple of weeks. There are still plenty of ways for you to win some really cool prizes from our sponsors, including guys over to Old Town Canoes and Kayaks, Yak Lights, um, Malone Auto Racks, Humminbird, Pen Reels, Fenwick Rods, Yak Attack, and more. There's a ton of prizes here. Uh, for instance, the November Fish of the Month prize is a $100 gift certificate to yakattack.com. And now that's going to be awarded to the participant who enters the longest black fish in the month of November. This means that the entry does not need to break into the top three, so long as just the largest, longest blackfish entered this month by a participant. Of course, if it does eclipse any of the top three, it will take over that spot. And speaking of the top three right now on the blackfish, uh, it is currently dominated by New England anglers. Uh, I, I know there's some good fish in the other regions. I gotta say, congrats to those New England guys. But right now we've got um, Chris Nev sitting in third place in blackfish division with a 21 and a half inch fish. Then and uh, holding on second place, Justin Oser has a 23 and a quarter inch blackfish. And topping it off so far right now for blackfish is New Englander Scott Schneider with a 24 and a quarter inch tog. But you know, it's not just a blackfish tournament. There's plenty of other species. We've actually got seven categories, including weak fish, porgies, fluke, black sea bass, sea robin, bluefish, and the hardtail combo, which includes false albacore and bonita, all of which angling across all the region, all these species, is going to get you on your way to win the grand prize, which is a brand new Old Town Sportsman Series Autopilot 136, outfitted with a light kit from the guys at Yak Lights. Now, like I noted earlier, we got a great lineup of other prizes as well, so be sure to head on over to thefisherman.com right now, check out all the details, and head out on there. You got a couple more weeks, there's still plenty of time to hit the leaderboard. All right, well, there you go. Uh, again, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines if you head out onto the water this weekend. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.